Hey fish people, my name is Bruce Adams and welcome to the adipose fin. What the heck is an adipose fin? Well, we'll get to that later. Hey listen, this is our first episode of the first season of the fly fishing series we're doing. We're here today to talk about some rod basics. Now, many of you are new to fly fishing. You need to know your tools first. So this quick tutorial is all about your rod. Now, the fly rod has a couple of key purposes. The first and most important is to direct your fly line with the fly attached to the fish. Fly rod and fly line really are the weight. The fly itself is, is insignificant as far as its weight. So you use the fly rod to actually propel the line to the area that you're fishing. Leverage is also an important role that the fly rod plays. Now, once you have your fish on the line, you'll use the rod to help play the fish and land the fish successfully. Now, rods have evolved over time from basically sticks off of trees to bamboo to fiberglass to graphite to carbon fiber. Those poles all basically did the same thing. They were able to shoot your line out into the water to put it where the fish are, it's important to look at the purpose and environment you'll be using the rod in. Small streams, ponds, large bodies of salt water, and most likely the size of fish you'll be casting for. Size does matter with fly fishing. But first, let's take a breakdown of the rod. Now I have a rod here that I've broken down into four different pieces so that we can easily see what the component parts are made out of. But first, let's talk about what these parts are. So the first part we're going to look at is the rod seat. It attaches your reel to the rod, and it's a strong anchor for your reel, so you won't lose it while playing a fish. Second, the grip. Now the grip is made of many different compounds. Most often you'll find it in cork, uh, but there are some synthetics out there. The handle comes in different shapes. It comes in the standard, the cigar, and the full wells. Now this is a standard grip and you'll notice that it is tapered in various areas and this really is to help accommodate your grip. Your thumb goes on this end over here to give you the most leverage. The next piece we'll talk about is the hook keeper. Now this is a convenient way to keep your hook out of your finger and into the rod for safe storage and transport. In a later episode we'll actually show you a better way to attach your fly line with its leader and the, the tippet to your rod so it's a lot easier, a lot safer for you. The next piece is called the stripping guide. Now this is a round ceramically coated circular guide that is the first guide from the reel. So the reel is down this end uh, and the line will come this way. This is a ceramic coated guide to decrease the amount of friction because really in fly fishing it is about throwing your line out using the weight of the line to propel the fly out to the water. Now this guide has ceramic in it so there's no friction. Now beyond the stripping guide you'll find these snake guides. Now these snake guides help guide the line straight um, and they create the least amount of friction because there's really nothing to uh, catch up on. It's just a piece of, it's basically a piece of wire that's bent over to help guide the line. The last foot or so of the rod is called the tip. At the very end is called the tip top. That's the last guide that your fly line will be going through on its way to the fish. Now the tip has various degrees of bend and flexibility. It's important to talk about action in the rod. Now it's a little bit counterintuitive in that the slow action has a lot of bend in the rod and fast action is a stiffer rod. The next important part we're going to talk about is what's called the ferrule and the ferrule is the way that the rod pieces together, the way that you assemble the rod. Now there's a female part and a male part uh, slides in and connects. Now the ferrules very important in that it allows you to take a very long rod, some 8, 9, 10 feet, break it up into smaller bits so that you can actually put it on your back, carry it to where you're going, disassemble it for easy transport. It also allows some uh, stiffening of the rod that helps with 
the whole concept of, of action and bend in the rod. So the point is to catch fish and land them, but you want to do it safely and as humanely as possible. So if you have a rod that is too stiff, smaller fish will fight against it and you'll wear them out and you'll injure the fish. Fish that are too big for your rod may actually break the line or break the rod uh, and you lose your catch. There's a specific notation on the rod that shows you the weight of the rod, the length of the rod, and if this rod breaks into multiple pieces so that you know you have it put together properly. This rod, for example, is a five weight, eight foot, six inch, four piece rod. Perfect for the Rocky Mountain region. Thanks for checking this video out. We appreciate it. We are a new channel and hope to have your support and subscription. So hit the subscribe button, like it, Please give us some comments. We'd love to learn our craft of YouTubing from you, our viewers. And together, we're going to learn something about fly fishing and have a great time.